the Facebook papers, a coup, and Sudan, and magic mushrooms. Those are just some of the stories we're going to talk about today. So let's get to it. Hey, thanks for joining me today. Tuesday, October 26th. I do want to thank you for hitting that like button, subscribing, all that good stuff. They tell me that it makes a difference in the algorithm, and I believe it. But first, I do want to give a shout out to my dad. It was nice seeing you this weekend for your birthday. Happy birthday, dad. I'm so glad that you are in my life. It means the world to me. And unlike my dad, I hope you actually hit the like button. He will watch my video and then send me an email and tell me how I drone on and on too much. <laughs> and I agree, I do. I'm trying to record these live with no edits. And sometimes I get a bit long-winded. That's why I've added time codes to every story that I do in the description. And on YouTube, there's a little scrub bar. So... If there's a story and you're getting bored with it, you want to go to the next one, it's very easy to do. Just click the link or the bar, and that'll take you right to the next story. It'd be so awesome if everybody would do that on their videos. I'm talking about big shows. If they would just make it easy to skip to the next story, that would be a nice thing to do. So I'm going to lead by example by doing it on my channel. Now, the first story that I'm going to talk about today is the Facebook papers. You may have heard about this, but let's get to it from the AP. The Facebook papers represents a unique collaboration between 17 American news organizations, including the Associated Press. Journalists from a variety of newsrooms, large and small, work together to gain access to thousands of pages of internal company documents obtained by Francis Haugen, the former Facebook product manager turned whistleblower. Okay. And it's not exactly as it's being reported. So the New York Times, this is what they come up with from the Facebook papers. They've looked into it, and they say, uh, you know, they want to let you know that these reports showed how Facebook knew Instagram was worsening body images among teenagers was some of the issues that were in the papers. We go to the Rolling, Rolling Stone, they'll tell you Facebook didn't do enough to tamp down Stop the Steal groups ahead of the insurrection. Uh, that's what Rolling Stone wants to tell you about it. Now, if you go and you read who funded this whistleblower, uh, Glenn, Glenn Greenwald talked about it in this very lengthy blog post that he did about this uh, billionaire, Pierre Omadier's financing of the whistleblower. And he has some thoughts on that as to, you know, why it was initially funded and uh, how this came about. That's all very interesting as well. But here's the point that I want to make. The Facebook papers are not public. They are only being shown to select media companies. And they tell us what is in them. So these media companies are the ones that give us the information because they're not public and you can't look at it for yourself. That reminds me very much of uh, Chris Cuomo. Also interesting is remember, it's illegal to possess uh, these stolen documents. It's different for the media. So everything you learn about this, you're learning from us. And in full disclosure, let's take a look at what is in there and what it means. Joining us now, CN. Yeah, that reminds me very much of that video clip where the CNN anchor was telling the world, hey, don't read the WikiLeaks. That's against the law. We'll read it for you and we'll tell you the important parts. Well, I can tell you that I read those WikiLeaks of the leaked emails. I didn't have a channel then, but I went through and I read them. And that was one of the eye-opening moments for me personally about the media 
is because I could read what was in them, and then I saw what was being reported, and it was quite different. There were a lot of things that were in those emails that were not reported by the media. And I think perhaps that's true with the Facebook papers as well. You know, you can even think about more recent things such as uh, Hunter Biden's laptop, right? Right before the election, that story came out. But the media told us, hey, there's nothing to it. In fact, this platform, Facebook, other places actually were suppressing that news. They didn't want people to know about that. And these are the same media companies that are reading the Facebook papers and telling us what's really in there. But we don't know what's really in there. Think about uh, even further back, the Duma gas attack in Syria. Look at how it was originally reported. All the mainstream media that was reporting it and then if you actually went and looked and read the whistleblower accounts, if you read the actual reports from the engineers at the place, it was quite a different story than what these media companies were telling us that it was. And even most recently, look at how they reported uh, Joe Rogan and the horse paste. Right? That was not exactly accurate. And these are the same media companies that are going to tell us what are in these Facebook papers. Well, I for one would actually like access to, to them all. Someone needs to leak them so that the public can go through them and find out what's really in them. Because I don't know about you, but do you believe the New York Times when they tell you, hey, we went through it and we saw they were being mean to teenage girls and trust us there wasn't really much else in there you believe that yeah i don't either and that's why i think it's important to take this news with a grain of salt don't just accept what the media is telling us about this and in fact one of the things that really bothers me is I will see uh, independent news media people talking about this, but they're just reporting on what's being reported without saying, hey, I wonder if there's things that aren't being reported. I think that's an important detail. And if your news source is not telling you about that, they're not telling you the whole story. So that's my take on the Facebook papers. Now, this is all new. There's new stories that are going to uh, come out every day that I'll take a look at. But until there's a source I trust, I'm going to take it for what it is. So let's get to story number two, which is the coup d'etat in Sudan. All right, let's see. Again, we'll go back to the AP. Sudan's military takes power in a coup and arrests the prime minister. This happened yesterday, uh, reported yesterday, Cairo uh, AP. Sudan's military seized power Monday, dissolving the transitional government hours after troops arrested the prime minister and thousands flooded the streets to protest the coup that threatened the country's shaky progress toward democracy. Security forces opened fire on some of them, and three protesters were killed, according to the Sudan a Doctors Committee, which also said 80 people were wounded. This takeover, which drew condemnation from the United Nations, the U.S., and European Union, come more than two years after protesters forced the ouster of longtime autocrat Omar al-Bashir, and just weeks before the military was supposed to hand the leadership to the council that runs the country over to the civilians. So that's a real serious thing that's happen, happening right now over in Sudan. One thing that I find interesting to do is you get on some of the apps that show you what social media is doing over there and you can check out some live feeds for yourself. But as this is developing. That's really all I have.
to say about that. But I don't know a whole lot about Sudan. And I ran into... I just got into a rabbit hole reading up about Sudan. So I thought I would share with you some fun facts about the Sudan. And the uh, official name is the Republic of the Sudan. There's their flag there. Uh, Sudan is in North Africa. There in purple. That's the country. To the north of it is uh, Egypt. To the uh, northwest of it, that's uh, Libya. To the right, what's that... Uh, Ethiopia, Somalia, get those two confused. I think that's uh, Ethiopia there to the right. Uh, but it is mainly, uh, the, the northern part of it is uh, desert, the southern part is tropical. So they have lots of, uh, they can actually grow things there. You may not know this, but they've got some pyramids. In fact, they have more pyramids than they do in Egypt, which is just to the north of them, although their pyramids are not quite as big. Um, like, uh, you know, the big one in, in Egypt is like over 450 feet. None of these reach 100 feet, so they're much smaller. They're more uh, angular. They're not as wide at the base. They're also called the Nubian uh, pyramids. So that's kind of cool. The name Sudan, and we say Sudan in America. In uh, Britain, they say Sudan, right? but we, we say Sudan is the pronunciation of it. It's actually uh, originally in Arabic. Um, w originally, it was Bilad as Sudan, and that means land of the blacks. So Bilad is a, a land or area, region, if you will, and Sudan is blacks. So their country is actually named blacks. And it's done so because the people that came there, they, they saw everyone was really black. It was a dark people. And so that's what Sudan is named after. I thought that was kind of a fun fact. The capital is Khartoum. Here's a, a postcard looking picture of Khartoum. Looks really pretty and nice. Of course, if you zoomed in and got down on a street level, there's a, a lot of chaos going on. But that would be the same. You could say the same thing about Portland. You know, a postcard of Portland is really nice. You get to some areas, you zoom in, and it also looks like a third world country here in my own city. But this is Khartoum, and I put a little graphic, put a little graphic, there we go, of an elephant, because Khartoum means elephant trunk. That's their capital, elephant trunk, which is kind of a cool name for a capital. And lastly, I guess this is fun, fun-ish, about what's happening with women in Sudan. Uh, it's not a great place for women. It's ranked one of the worst places in the world for women. However, they are making advances, and it is getting better. So, for example, just a few years ago, women couldn't wear trousers or slacks, pants. They couldn't wear pants. Originally, if they wore pants, they would be whipped. Uh, Sudan is, uh, has Sharia law meaning that it's pretty strict. Uh, it's not as socially progressive as, as most of the West is. So women were not allowed to wear pants. Uh, being gay is a capital offense. It would kill you if you came out. <laughs> so, but more recently, they changed from whipping women for wearing pants to fining women for wearing pants. And uh, just a couple of years ago, some women wanted to take that to court and they were not fined. And so now women can actually wear pants 
in public in Sudan. So, you know, baby steps. They're moving forward. They're, they are making a lot of progress for women. And one of the things that is helping that along is actually social media. Uh, women are able to do a little business, sell things on Facebook, things like that. Uh, so there is progress being made for women in Sudan. All right. And uh, next, I want to do a segment, very short segment, <laughs> that I will call Presented Without Comment. There are lots of stories that I'd like to comment on, and I think better of it. And so I'm just going to say this is presented without comment. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I'm proud of myself. I bit my tongue. I did not uh, say anything. But lastly, let's get to some good news. I could use some good news, good news to pull me through. John Hopkins Medical receives first federal grant for psychedelic treatment research in 50 years. And this is actually from uh, John Hopkins Medicine website. So, John Hopkins Medicine was awarded a grant from the National Institute of Health to explore a potential impact of uh, psilocybin I hope I'm saying that right, on tobacco addiction. This is the first NIH grant awarded in over half a century to directly investigate the therapeutic effects of a classic psychedelic consistent with a recent study published online, um, which is pretty, pretty freaking awesome. So this is... Uh, fantastic that they're actually going to look at magic mushrooms in the treatment for various things. The first thing that they're going to look into, the first federally uh, funded grant for magic mushrooms, is to research whether you can use mushrooms to quit smoking cigarettes. It should be an interesting thing. Uh, based on the preliminary studies, they've found that it works much better than many other treatments. They use it in combination with uh, talk therapy, uh, cognitive behavior therapy. So they would learn how to address your addiction to tobacco, and they're using the magic mushrooms, I think in, in small doses, to help out with that. And if it turns out that that is an effective treatment, that will be good for all people that are addicted to uh, tobacco, get healthier, quit smoking. I have my own uh, method for quitting smoking. I should make a video on that. But this is uh, good news. This is good news. I live in Oregon, and they have decriminalized all drugs, including magic mushrooms. Of course, decriminalized does not mean legal, right? I think... Magic mushrooms are actually legal in Oregon, but you can't buy them anywhere. I don't know where. I guess you got to go to a street dealer to buy them. Uh, I have not seen them in any of the shops. Now, we can walk into stores and buy marijuana, etc., but you cannot walk into the store and buy magic mushrooms yet. However, you know, maybe that will come. But overall, I think that's pretty good news. Let's see, boom, there we go. And yeah, that's it. Those are the stories for today. Like I say, I appreciate you liking and sharing and putting up with me as I try to get better at recording these live. I think I'll start to be able to do a better job and uh, put out videos more frequently. Thanks for your support. Let me know what you think and have an awesome day.